To orientate ourselves to the anatomy of the gluteus maximus muscle, we're going to come and arise from the ilium, the sacrum, sacrotuberous ligament, and coming down to then attach to the uh, iliotibial band as well as the femur. So we're coming down in this horizontal, um, coming through the side here, creating some of the gluteal fold there, and then getting into the posterior iliac iliotibial band as well as the greater trochanter or the femur rather. To assess for the strength of the gluteus maximus, we'll place our client in a prone position. We'll ask them to flex the knee and then lift the leg off the bed, and then also stabilize at the pelvis. From here, we'll apply force down towards the bed as we ask them to maintain that contraction against our resistance. And once you've completed your testing, we'll make sure to compare that to the other side. To assess for the length of the gluteus maximus, what we'll do is position our client in a supine position and bend their knees up. And from here, we're gonna flex the hip by taking the knee to the chest and in towards the mid midline. The gluteus maximus also mildly externally rotates the hip here. So we can address some of the fibers by taking the hip into some internal rotation by rotating down at the knee here as we flex up to the hip. We can. Free our hands and palpate for any specific bands of tension in the muscle as well. Once you've assessed one side, we'll also then have to compare that to the other side for any deficit for the client. For a strength application to the gluteus maximus, we'll first place our client in the lengthened position. So supine with the knees towards the chest and across to the midline or in side lying. From here, we measure a length of tape to cover the muscle from the origin into the insertion. So either from the sacrum or the ilium, whichever fibers you felt were most problematic. And we'll roll the tape off the backing and let the initial anchor to zero anchor settle to zero tension before placing it on our origin. And from here, we roll the tape on the back off the backing and stretch it out to 25 to 35 percent of the available tension before letting the final anchor settle to zero and then placing it on our insertion down on the femur and the iliotibial band. Rub the tape to activate the glue and once we've completed, a, completed our taping application we'll make sure to reassess the muscle for changes in strength as well as any other functional gains. For a length application to the gluteus maximus, we'll first position the client in a lengthened position. So either in supine with the knee towards the chest and the client holding that knee, or this could be done in side lying. We measure a length of tape to cover the muscle. And with the length application, we're going to start at the insertion at the iliotibial band or the femur. So we roll off the initial anchor, let it settle to zero tension and place that on the femur. And then we'll roll the tape off the backing with 15 to 25 percent of the valvable tension towards the origin on the sacrum or the ilium or whichever direction of the fibres you find that are appropriate during the testing. At the end there, we'll pull the final anchor off the backing, let it settle to zero before placing that on to the sacrum or ilium. Rub the tape to activate the glue. And once we've completed our tape application, we'll make sure to reassess the muscle for improvements in length and strength if it was in deficit as well, as well as retest for any functional changes. Let's familiarise ourselves with the anatomy of the gluteus minimus and gluteus medius. 
So as we orientate ourselves to the ilium, the bony ridge through here, the muscles come from the ilium and attach to the greater decanter. So we'll find the greater decanter and outline the bone. So the gluteus minimus arises from the external surface of the ilium and attaches to the anterior surface of the greater decanter, whereas the gluteus medius sits above this, arising from the iliac crest and coming down to the lateral surface of the greater decanter. The fibres of the anterior gluteus medius work with gluteus minimus, whereas the posterior fibres of the gluteus medius will then serve to abduct and externally rotate as opposed to those anterior fibres which abduct and internally rotate. To assess for the strength of the gluteus medius and minimus, what we'll do is position our client in sideline position with the muscle being tested on top. And we'll flex the knee to 90 degrees, put the hand on the knee just to standardise the range of the lower leg. After that position, you can, your client can place their hands on the bed if they wish, but it's just to standardise the opposite hip. From here, we're going to keep the hip in neutral and then abduct the hip. So making sure that we stabilise the pelvis so it neither goes forwards or backwards. We abduct the, fit, the hip to its full range and then instruct the client to hold that position. So here to bias our testing towards the internal rotators, we're going to put the foot in internal rotation. So turning the toes towards the floor there, holding that position. Now, once we let go, if the patient has a lag, drops their leg or is unable to hold in position, that would indicate a weakness already and you may not be required to then apply the isometric muscle test. So we'll ask the client to hold it there, transfer our hands to the top position and then push down towards the floor. To then bias the testing towards the external rotators, we do the same thing, stabilise the pelvis abduct the hip and this time turn the foot up towards the ceiling, making sure the hip is in neutral and the hip doesn't then flex. So holding that position there, again we transfer our hands into the upright position there so that we can push down towards the floor. Now you'll see here the hip coming forward as a compensatory strategy, so again that would indicate some form of weakness in the external rotators that also abduct. To assess for the length of the gluteus medius and minimus complex, first position your client in supine. We'll flex the hip to 90 degrees and while stabilising the pelvis, adduct the hip by taking the knee across the midline. Once you feel the pelvis wanting to move, that's when we'll stop to assess for the adduction range. From that point here, we'll bias our testing towards implicating the, either the posterior fibres of the gluteus medius or the anterior fibres of gluteus medius and gluteus minimus by rotating the hip. So when we externally rotate the hip, using the lower leg as leverage, what we are stressing then is the internal rotating fibres. So we're testing here for the length of the anterior gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus. When we internally rotate the hip and adduct as well, what we're now testing with the leg, the hip in internal rotation is we're testing the external rotatory fibres. So in other words, the posterior fibres of the gluteus medius. So depending on whether you're internally or externally rotating the hip and then feeling for the tension there, that will determine which muscle we're in particular interested in taping. For a strength application to the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, we must first position the client in a lengthened position. So to position the posterior fibres, so the ones that we would have tested as being weak in abduction and external rotation, we'll take the, the consider the fibre direction and then position the femur in a continuation of those fibres line, fibre lines. So as we follow these fibres, posterior fibres here, we position the femur just so it sits in continuation of that line to really lengthen the tissue. From there, we measure a length of tape from the posterior ilium over to the greater decanter. 
We start our tape by removing the tape off the backing and let it settle to zero and starting our tape on the posterior ilium. From there, we pull back the tape to the final anchor, stretch it out with 25 to 35% tension before letting the final anchor rest to zero and then placing that on the greater trochanter. Rub the tape to activate the glue. Once we've completed that taping, we'll reassess the muscle for length and uh, rather strength gains, as well as any functional gains. Now, if we've tested that the anterior fibres are in fact weak, what we will do is also reposition the body then to then put those fibres in a lengthened position. Now, as these fibres are more anterior, what we'll do is we'll bend the bottom leg and then extend the top and taking the hip into adduction and the knee is slightly looking up towards the ceiling for some external rotators as those fibres are internal rotators. Again, we measure a length of tape from the ilium, so more anterior this time, to the greater trochanter. So we'll remove the back tape off the backing, let it settle to zero tension before placing it on the ilium to cover both the anterior fibres of glute med min as well as the gluteus minimus. Pull the tape back to the final anchor and stretch that out with 25 to 35% tension before rolling the tape off the backing, let it settle to zero and then place that anchor onto the anterior side of the greater decanter. Rub the tape to activate the glue and once more we'll retest the muscle for improvements and changes in strength as well as any functional changes. For a length application to the posterior fibres of the gluteus medius, what we'll do is position our client in a side-lying position. So with the, leg, the lower leg extended, we'll adduct the hip across the midline by resting the knee down on the bed. From here, what we're going to do is I think consider the fibre orientation of those posterior fibres and think about the line from the posterior superior leg spine coming across into the greater decanter. So we're thinking about these fibres here, say. What we're going to do then is position the lower part of the leg, the femur, in a continual line from those fibres. So if let, the fibres are in this position, we'll move the pelvis down so it's a continuation of those fibre lines. From here, we measure a length of tape from the greater trochanter down to, and up towards rather the posterior superior iliac uh, spine there. And so we remove the tape off the backing and let the tape settle to zero tension before applying it on the lateral greater trochanter. From here, we roll the tape off the backing with 15 to 25% stretch. And once we get to the end there, let the tape settle before we roll it onto the skin. Rub the tape to activate the glue. And once we've completed our taping, make sure to reassess the muscle for changes in length as well as any strength changes if that was in deficit. And of course, contextually, we want to reassess that client within the context of their functional limitation. Now, to move on to taping for the anterior portion of the gluteus medius as well as the gluteus minimus, we'll reposition our client, flexing the bottom leg up and extending the top leg. From here, we take the leg into adduction again and because we're taping an internal rotator, it's okay if we drop the leg off the bed there to get with the leg in extension to get a little bit of external rotation, making sure that the pelvis is stable and holding itself forward as the hip moves into that extension. From here, we measure a length of tape from the greater trochanter to the iliac spine, more anteriorly here. And this will cover both the gluteus medius, which attaches into the, the iliac spine, as well as the gluteus minimus that actually sits underneath it. We'll take the tape, roll it off the backing, set it to 0% tension there, and place that anchor on the greater decanter. From here, we roll the tape off the backing with 15 to 25% stretch before letting the final anchor settle to zero and then rubbing that onto the iliac crest. Rub the tape to activate the glue, and as always, we'll reassess the muscle for changes in length, as well as strength if that was in deficit, and contextually place this new application within the context of functional changes.